Hey everybody, I'm Mike Kazmer, and today we've got another brand new bike to look at, the SCORE 2030. Now before we go too far, you might not have heard the name SCORE. They emerged a couple years ago, they're actually an offshoot of BMC, a Swiss brand, and basically the way it started is a couple guys that worked for BMC started doing some after hours projects, taking frames, cutting them apart, making some new, new bikes that didn't exist in BMC's lineup. BMC was impressed with what they were doing and decided to start a little spin-off, a little offshoot brand that's more focused on fun rather than the more, let's say, serious race-bred bikes that BMC is known for. So that's how we arrived at SCORE. We checked out the 4060 model a couple years ago. That was their 140 or 160 millimeter travel bike. And now the newest addition to the lineup is this one, the 2030. As you might have guessed from the name, this one has 120 millimeters of rear travel. You can also bump it up to 130 if you want, but the stock configuration is 120 millimeters and that's paired with 140 millimeter fork up front. The idea behind this bike, basically SCORE wanted to make a, let's say a scaled down enduro bike rather than a beefed up XC bike. I know that might seem like splitting hairs, but the idea is that this bike, it's tested the same standards as their longer travel bikes, which means if you want to push it a little further than you might want, typically do on a 120 bike, you can, or at least the frame can handle it. Your body, your skills, that's a different story. Um, to help with that handling, they give it a fairly slack head tube angle of 64.5 degrees. Score went with a really short back end of only 429 millimeters. So the chain stays are pretty stubby um, and they wanted to do that in order to keep that fun factor high. Now I know, Chainstay length doesn't determine whether or not a bike is fun or not, but short chainstays can make it easier to manual, to wheelie, to kind of whip around corners. And the, one of the designers has a BMX background. I think that's a check on the bingo card if you've been playing along. But his BMX background, the way he likes to ride, that's how this bike emerged. Other figures to go over, we've got a nice steep seat tube angle and the reach numbers, there's five different sizes, range from small to XL. And it's actually a medium large size, which is what I've been riding. I'm 180 centimeters tall, about five foot 11 and the reach on this medium large is 477 millimeters. So kind of the sweet spot for me. Um, and 477 is about what you'd expect from some companies size larges these days. So um, should be a decent range for a good selection of riders. Moving on from the geometry details, the actual kinematics of the bike, it uses a dual co-rotating link suspension design. So two short links, both rotate as the bike goes through its travel, um, designed to have good pedaling performance, and with a relatively high anti-squat early on in the travel, drops off as it goes deeper. So again, so when you're pedaling up a hill, it should feel efficient and then kind of open up a little bit more for the descent. As for the frame itself, it's only available in carbon and the frame has everything you'd expect from a modern, modern mountain bike frame. You've got down tube storage underneath a little compartment, twist the dial, open it up, you put all your candy bars in there. And this does actually fit a score bar. So you can put a score in your score and then you're all set. You also have couple little mounts underneath the top tube to carry more tools or tubes. Got internal cable routing, and luckily they didn't go through the headset, so props to SCORE for doing that. There's a nice short seat tube, so plenty of room for longer travel dropper posts. Another feature I should mention is the fact that you can steepen the head tube angle by one degree by rotating the headset cups. Like I said, it comes in that slack setting, 64.5 degrees, but if you were riding it, thought you wanted something maybe a little quicker handling to match your terrain, and just pop those cups out, rotate them 180 degrees, steepen it up to 65.5 degrees. So kind of a nice feature, add some adaptability, means you're not totally locked into the geometry um, that the bike comes with. There's three different complete versions of the 2030 available. Um, right here, this is the GX model, which retails for 7,299 US dollars. It's a pretty high price considering the parts package. We'll dig into that a little bit more. But overall, what you're getting for this price is cable actuated SRAM GX drivetrain, a DT Swiss XM 1700 wheels, suspension is handled by RockShox. So you've got a regular deluxe ultimate rear shock. So that's the doesn't have the piggyback you might find on a more enduro oriented bike. And up front, you have a 140 millimeter RockShox Pike Ultimate. Finishing kit includes score zone carbon bar, 20 mil rise, uh, a bike yoke dropper post, and then the tire combo is a Maxxis dissector up front and a recon in the rear. So it's a little bit more faster rolling, slightly more XC oriented, but you can get away with some pretty rowdy stuff, um, assuming you're a smoother rider because those do just have the XO casing um, compared to the little bit tougher XO plus casing. So this bike just launched today, so it's probably the first time, or it should be the first time, most of you have been seeing it but I've actually been riding it for the last six weeks. I managed to snag it up at Whistler during Crankworks, rode a bunch in Whistler, and then more recently, I've been riding it down here in Bellingham, Washington. So, you know, take it on a wide variety of terrain, just kind of figure out 
where this bike fits in and if it actually holds up to its mini enduro tough trail billing. So we'll start with the climbing because that's how most good rides start. Climbing wise, I'm impressed. Very efficient suspension design. You can pedal, you can really stomp down and mash and you don't have any bobbing, um, you know, no wallowing. And the fact that the shock is hidden from view, if you do look down, probably helps a little bit. You can't actually see it moving because the shock tunnel kind of covers it. But overall, um, does feel quick and efficient, kind of what you'd want a modern trail bike to feel like. You know, it's not, I'm not gonna say anything about it being like an XC bike, because remember, trail bike weighs right around 30 pounds. Um, so it's not gonna be the same as your super light 120 mil XC bike, but for a modern trail bike, something designed to do a little bit of everything, um, very comfortable. Again, that steep C tube angle, nice and upright position. The stack height is a little bit low. Um, partway through the test period, I did put some high rise bars on a little bit longer stem that helped me with my dimensions just be a little bit more upright. I think as it comes, it's not bad, but it just does put a little bit more weight on the front. So if you raise up the front end, it's just a little bit more comfortable. Again, more rider preference than any design um, misstep or anything like that. The head tube length is fairly moderate. So it's not super short, not super long. So climbing wise, efficient. It might prioritize that efficiency a little bit over traction, but it doesn't give you that kind of locked out skittery feel. So overall hits what I would say is the sweet spot for bike in this category. I mentioned that my first rides on this bike took place up in Whistler. If you've been there, even if you haven't, you probably know that outside the bike park are all, sign, all kinds of tricky, awkward, rocky, and steep trails. Good area just to test any bike to its limits. On the score, I came away impressed. It has the feel of a bigger bike in that your positioning and the stability that you have while going downhill is there. You don't have the travel, so you can run out of travel before you run out of geometry, basically. But overall, in my head, I just never thought that, oh no, I'm on a 120 bike, I won't be able to do this certain maneuver. So I think it, it does what they set out to do. It allows you to push it a little harder than you might typically think you could on a trail bike, you know, within reason. You're not gonna smash through the biggest rocks and not feel them. It does transmit a fair bit of kind of trail feedback to you, but that's also a very engaging bike. You can tell what the ground is doing underneath you. It doesn't just fully smother it, um, but the suspension does do a good job of absorbing the bigger hits considering the amount of travel. I should also mention the chainstay length. Chainstays are a hot topic these days. There's some people that think they figured out the perfect equation you'll see people kind of divide the front center by the rear center and carry the four and then they have their ideal chain stay ratio i'm not convinced that there's one perfect answer with the score they went about as short as i think you can go and it works at least on this size um, that short back end is easy to maneuver on the climbs tight stuff super easy to get around kind of more awkward slower speed bits and on the descents same thing if you're going down the steeps you can really maneuver that back end around easily and I never felt like I was too far over the back or that it was sketchy because of how short it was. Other notes on descending, really good bottom out resistance, especially with this shock. You know, hit some bigger jumps and bigger drops, no harsh clangs. And the shock itself does a really good job. There's three compression settings that you can adjust in the full open mode. Um, it has a lockout, which is a very firm lockout that I never used. But when it's open, you can select different compression settings, kind of depending on the terrain, maybe the conditions. If it's soft, if some, you want more grip, it's a little slippery out, open it all the way up. And for the most part, I was happy with it in the middle setting, worked well on the, the full ride, range of terrain. Now we should get to the part of how this bike compares to others in the category, because it's kind of a growing category. A few years ago, this, these numbers just would have seemed extreme. 64.5, too slack for a short travel bike. Turns out it works really well. I think more short travel bikes could benefit from numbers similar to this, at least in the head angle department. Um, other contemporaries would include the Canyon Spectral 125. We should also mention the Norco Optic. Um, and, and those two are the ones that are probably the closest as far as overall geometry numbers. The Spectral is a little bit slacker and a little bit longer. And that bike at times can feel a little more meandering on the climbs um, and a little bit more of a handful on the descents. They're fairly close, but that Spectral does have a little bit bigger presence on the trail. And that feels even closer to a Enduro bike where the score managed to have a little bit more life to it, a little more peppy. A little easier to manual, um, kind of easier to jump. So, you know, there's similar category, but very different ride feel. There's also down tube storage in the score and room for a bigger water bottle compared to the Spectral 125. Um, compared to the Optic, this is a little bit slacker head tube angle, but a little bit shorter reach, a little short chain stay. So the numbers, the wheelbase numbers end up being pretty similar. Um, I would say that I prefer the suspension design and feel of the score to the optic and be a matter of personal preference but i did find the climbing performance a little bit better on this bike slightly steeper seat tube angle as well uh, you know neither bike will hold you back in the kind of wide variety of terrain that they're designed for but the score definitely 
pushes things a little further than the optic and I think it takes it in a really good direction. As far as pros and cons go, I think the biggest pro of this bike is gonna be its handling, especially on descents. There aren't too many 120 mil trail bikes that let you get away with what you can on this bike. I think that the actual, the overall feel on this bike is gonna be the, that's the highlight. Um, another pro is how quiet it is. You know, that's something that gets overlooked, but this bike is relatively silent. Minimal chain slap, none of the cables are rattling. So, you know, it's quiet, descends well. Those are two big pros. As far as cons, really the con is gonna be the price. It's on the higher end of the spectrum, especially considering the build kit. There are other bikes out there, similar parts that are less expensive. And you know, for this price, I kind of would expect it to have seen maybe a wireless drivetrain. Um, we've seen SRAM's transmission pop up in this price bracket, maybe carbon wheels. You know, those aren't necessities by any means, but for 7,300 US dollars, I kind of would have liked a better build kit. So I think the con, the biggest con is just gonna be, it's not the best value. But again, if that performance is there, maybe it's a little bit easier to swallow. And you can also get the frame only, which might be a better way to build up exactly the bike that you'd want. Well, there you have it. That's the score 2030. Great new aggressive trail bike. You can head to Pink Bike to find the full review, a little bit more in-depth. We'll kind of pull it apart even further. But overall, Score is doing a really good job with this new bike. Great new addition to their lineup. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Maybe let us know in the comments if this kind of bike is what you're looking for. Or if you want more travel, maybe less travel, let us know. We're listening. Thanks. Thanks.